Hey guys, it's me, Maxi Rainbow. And I am Renata from the eSpot. And welcome back to episode 23 of the Joint Slay podcast. In this episode, we are super duper excited to get into another Super Saturday recap for you guys. And, and you know, like we've been saying, it's we're getting into the thick of it. But girl, we're starting to get official entries from mm -hmm. these Super Saturdays. We have Ireland, Luxembourg, official entries coming from them. And we have the semifinals from Norway and Lithuania. Oh my goodness. There's a lot of songs in this episode to get into. We've got official entries. We've got so much stuff and a lot of really good songs, in my opinion. A lot of stuff to talk about. And make sure you guys stick around to the end of the episode because we have an exclusive announcement of a new song from a participant in one of the national selections we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. But before we get into this episode, we have to, of course, shout out our patrons. These are people who went over to patreon.com slash joint slay podcast to support the podcast, as well as get access to the full length video episodes of every single episode of the podcast, ad free and early release on Thursdays, as well as some Patreon exclusive content that we have over there. And also you get some little snippets of the songs when we're talking about like, you know, this entire wall of music. And sometimes it's very overwhelming to keep up with it. So over on the Patreon, you get the little song snippets. So if you have no idea what we're talking about, you get a little more insight into that. Just a little extra something. And you also get a shout out at the beginning of the episode, like the following people. So shout out to Meredith, Danielle, Obili, Alistair, Russell, Shoegazer, Daniel. Kathleen, Suniva, shout out Suniva because I saw you pop into my Instagram live. We stand Ooh. Suniva. I mean, we stand everybody, but yeah. we stand Suniva, stand Norbert, Jackson, Henny, Andrew. Shout out to y'all and shout out to everyone who has been listening to the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, on YouTube. And if you guys are loving the podcast, make sure you head over to the Patreon and subscribe to get all that extra little content and support the podcast. And yeah, guys, let's get into this crazy wild episode. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. This was what an exhausting, exhausting Saturday. I couldn't even watch them all on Saturday. I had to get caught up afterwards because it was overwhelming. It's super Saturday for a reason. It is super exhausting Saturday. Yes, but actually we did start out on Friday, which was actually very, it's honestly, it's very refreshing that Ireland did theirs on a Friday. I feel like that's the one smart thing that Ireland does with their selection. I don't maybe think it's per, uh, purposeful or anything like that with these intentions. But the nice thing is everybody on Twitter be talking about it because mm -hmm. they do it on a Friday where there's no other national selections going on. Uh, so I was, you know, these are my people, right? My Irish people. This is my heritage. And so in my brain, I'm always rooting for Ireland, right? Going into it. They're the country I want to stand so bad. Because it's also hard for as an American, like I have no connection to any specific country specifically, like the way that other people do. So, you know, Ireland's my country in that way. Uh, to me, they're my they're my homeland. So, well, we both sort of have that going on with wanting to stand our heritage countries, because I would love nothing more than to stand Poland in Eurovision. But unfortunately, Poland sucks in Eurovision. Um, I hope that they're going to change that this year. I think, I think they're changing it. I think this year's going to be we're turning it around for both of our both of our countries. <laughs> um, so. You know, the national selection, how it went. So they, they ha have Euro song on the late, late show. So it's kind of so, like ugh, the worst thing. First possible <laughs> format. But yeah, it's not good. It's 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 weird how it is because it's not like a traditional national selection at all. Um, It's also not like a, you know, I don't know. It's just literally like a late night show where they're presenting these songs and then they have these random bitches giving their thoughts on each song between each song i'm like okay we didn't need to hear your opinion I'm like okay yeah it's like a national final but it's 
mixed in with a late night talk show. So you get that sort of level of production for the music, like when you have the guest band come mm-hmm. on, you know, Maroon 5 will like be on the Jimmy Fallon show or whatever, yeah. when they, you know, that sort of situation. But then they also have the component of like the voice or whatever, where you have a panel giving feedback which i don't understand why they need to be having these random people giving feedback they should just let the people vote and not be influenced yeah i mean actually to be honest i don't really i i would still not like it because i don't i don't like the general concept of these people giving their thoughts in between each song before anybody has the chance to vote because it leaves opportunity for what they say to sway people's opinions i would actually as much as i hate the idea of them being positive about every single song and not giving any negative thing i think it's unfair to have some songs that receive all positive critiques and then some songs that receive majority negative ones because that is going to affect the way that people vote and the way that people look at it you know and sway their their views i would actually prefer and the thing is that those people on that um like group of four they don't vote like they're just giving their opinions. I would rather them be the jury that's voting so I could at least understand the mentality of why the jury's voting the way that they do, you know, because yeah. we'll get into the results. But like, I was really confused. Yeah, that makes sense. Totally. What I felt like with these particular juror or whatever we want to call them critics uh, first of all, like I did not get a sense of like why, why these people, um, yeah. but also it felt like a lot of their feedback was like stuff that would be said if you were in a closed meeting with your delegation who's picking the song on why Mm -hmm. they should or shouldn't pick a song. And I felt like some of the feedback was basically just saying this song shouldn't have even been given as an option. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, well maybe that's like a conversation for the producers of the show. And it just didn't seem right on like live as it was going like I don't I don't know I don't think the artists were on stage during that I hope they weren't because that would have been so awkward yeah I I'm assuming they weren't because they were always talking to the presenter Mm -hmm. so I'm assuming they were like but I don't yeah it's it's a very it's a very weird kind of format the way that they did that I mean luckily you know spoiler alert I'm pretty happy with how it turned out but like it could have been disastrous Right. So so let's get into uh, these performances, these artists, these songs. So we're going to go in order of the running order. So the first to perform was Miss Isabella Kearney with her song, Let Me Be the Fire. Okay, I thought she was amazing, actually. Mm -hmm. I thought she sounded really, really good. Actually, when she went out first, I was like, hold on, wait a second. Okay, wait, Ireland, maybe they fixed it. Like, maybe they turned around because she sounded really good despite all the odds. She low-key kind of turned it. Um, And like, yeah, it was just kind of this, um, you know, pop girly, like singing with her band sort of vibe. It wasn't anything like amplified crazy, but it was a fun, like kind of British style pop dance song. And I really liked it. I was kind of shocked that she ended up getting like last in some categories. I was like, girl, really? Like, I thought this was better than, I don't know, some of the other girlies that were maybe in a similar genre. I loved this song, actually. Um, this is the song that I would listen to. Um, yeah. I wasn't sure that I really loved her, though. I didn't feel mm. like, I just didn't, I just didn't really like her performance that much. And well, I this didn't last. Really? Well, that's not right. <laughs> that yeah, no, that's not right. Um, I mean, I mean, I believe you are correct, but that ain't right. No, no, no. <laughs> um, uh, I didn't like the kind of band setup thing that she had, mm. and the reason I didn't like it was because it was like I can imagine how good it would be if I was in a live venue and I had her singing with that little band setup, and there's an audience like in front of her but it wasn't it was a a tv studio and they were pretending to play instruments and Mm -hmm. she had to like her performance kind of was a performance you would give to an audience and not a performance for a television camera so i didn't feel like i connected with her very much but uh i don't i don't think they did her any favors with with the staging on this um 
but they obviously aren't working with much also so it's a challenge yeah see i didn't mind the staging in a way because i think it's it's a struggle because the the actual the stage if you even want to call it that is it doesn't lend itself to like anything really over the top and like artistic in that way and so i kind of feel like you know she just kind of went for like you're performing on snl on that little stage and you just kind of have your band and you're just standing there singing and like that's what it is because that's the space that's provided you know so yeah. i didn't mind it in that way but i i was loki sock so she came last in the international jury and the televote the only she came second to last in the national jury what i'm sorry confused i don't understand confused. that's a really weird result because i definitely don't think that she was the worst one yeah i agree but then we had uh from from the worst to the best uh, results wise um was Bambi Thug with their song Doomsday Blue. This was fucking insane. So I did listen to pretty much only um, this song and uh, Go Tubbin. What, Tubbin? Go, I know it's not Toban. But Go Tubbin, I think. Go Tubbin. Uh, I, I only listened to these two songs because they were like kind of the front runners going into it. And they were also, they also seemed really different and cool so they caught my attention but i never saved any of them like i wasn't really like actively following listening rooting for anyone i remember people were like um asking me beforehand oh who are you rooting for in ireland i was like nobody nobody really i mean i was like bambi thug because i think their aesthetic and stuff is really cool but i wasn't specifically rooting for anybody but after i saw this performance i was totally blown away because they Again, they ha it's that small, like you really, it's almost impossible to really serve on that stage. And yeah. they somehow put on what felt like a huge performance on that little teeny stage. They really showed just a little bit of what could be done on that Eurovision stage. Like after watching that, I was like, oh, wow, this is one I can totally see on a big stage. And this is a song that is near impossible to pull off live, I feel like, with yeah. the way that the vocals change from, like, that intense screaming to then the soft singing and and even, like, the kind of speaking parts and, like, the almost, like, slam poetry, like, fast talking in, like, a very high-pitched voice. It's all, like, there's so many different levels to this that are so hard to pull off live, and they executed it out i mean uh, nearly flawlessly given the circumstances so i was shocked uh, and they totally blew me out of the way and and you know spoiler alert they won and yeah. i could not be happier about it because this was just amazing yeah i i think they made the right choice mm -hmm. choosing this one out of what they had available um and this was an example of like even though the studio sucks like you can make a really good performance given mm -hmm. what you have, which I think sort of really was a dramatic comparison to pretty much everything else in the contest. Like with the yeah. first one where it's like, oh, this could actually, it could be so much better. And the fact that Bambi Thug pulled this off as well as they did, given the circumstances, like you said, you can imagine that when it comes to Eurovision with the resources and just the like general possibilities that you get from like the boxes and the LEDs and mm. the pyro and everything, this one is going to be really amazing. Um, I don't think that I actually truly love the song very much. Like I'm impressed. I was really impressed by the performance. I thought it was super interesting as like a piece of artwork, but I don't think it's like a song. Like it's a video that I will watch, but it's not probably a song that I will mm. listen to. Mm -hmm. That's how I felt at first when I heard the song, but this was one that once I saw the visual and I saw the performance, it all clicked for me. And now it's been like on repeat. And this is not like a type of music that I would normally find myself listening to, but I've actually been like nonstop since since the performance. I'm obsessed and I'm so glad 
that Ireland is taking a risk because yes. going into this, that was what pretty much the entire fandom, the sentiment it felt like coming from everyone was like, come on, Ireland. Like you have two songs in this lineup that are a risk that are actually something like if you want a good result, you need to take a risk. You guys keep doing the same basic, boring stuff every single time. And it's just like, you're not going to get anywhere with that. You're never, you're never, you're never going to, you will be lucky to make the final. You definitely ain't winning. And this is an entry that, yeah, it might be so off-putting that people are not going to like it and and it'll be left in the semifinal, but at least you took that risk and you didn't just go for the safe route that you know is inevitably not going to do well because you do it every year and it never does well. This is an entry that could get, you know, NQ left in the semi. Mm -hmm. It could also get top 10 because it's that much of a risk and it, it's so different. It's going to stand out to everything else in that contest. There's not going to be anything like this. And and seeing the divisiveness of this entry on social media where there are people that love it so hard and there are people that hate it so hard, that's giving me like really good result vibes from that. Oh, it, it makes me remember when Let Three was chosen and there were people mm -hmm. who were so incredibly excited about it. And that was also a bit of like a very provocative kind of love it or hate it type thing that did manage to grow on a lot of people who didn't like it, who actively disliked it at the beginning. So I think with this one, there's more of a possibility that maybe you might have some detractors, but as time goes on, you're going to have a lot of people who really warm up to it and start to understand it a little bit more. Um, I'm really excited about this one because like you said, it's a risk. And also like with last year, they played it so safe and so much of the feedback from the beginning was that this is a, this is not going to qualify yeah. and everyone ended up being right. And I feel like, um, they just, at least they have, they have people talking about this song, but the topic of the, of the conversation is not what an awful pick it's actually people being at least some people being very excited and any strong any group of people with a strong viewpoint that is good is like a really good start as opposed to uh almost universally negative feedback people but if people are begging you to revamp your song as soon as it's been chosen <laughs> like they did with wild youth if people are begging you to do that you have a problem and that does not seem to be the case this time around, at least. Yeah, yeah. And I also, you know, for me personally, that the more I kept like thinking about it, like, once they were selected, the feeling of, because y'all know, <laughs> I mentioned it every episode about my dreams of one day mm -hmm. entering for Ireland. But there's always been a little piece of me in the back of my mind where like, you know, I always hear people say that like, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, the network's a little more conservative and like they wouldn't ever go for something that is is so alternative, so also like queer and seeing Ireland pick like the Irish public and the Irish people pick this, both the Irish jury and the Irish televote put this as their winner. So like they unanimously, well, not maybe not unanimously. I don't know if that's the right word, but you know what they fuck? They they pick this entry. And so that gives me hope and that makes me so excited because I just never, I really didn't expect Ireland to go this route and go so hard. And I made the comparison of this to um, when Iceland went from Ari Olafsson to Hattare mm. and then they went from Wild Youth to Bambi Thug. Yeah, It's like the difference in that is so crazy, but I'm hoping, you know, this is my winner right now. Of the whole thing? Yes. I mean, granted, there's like six entries, five or six entries. Yeah. Um, so I don't think this will stay my winner, but this is my favorite so far. This is the one that is also, it's stuck in my head. Like, because it was between this and Veronica from Slovenia, but Veronica just, it really, it's cool in the moment, but I forget it very quickly. And this one, it, it does stay in my head that I... I I see the scars in your eyes. I'm like, yes. That's, That's the best part of the song for me. That yeah. particular part. Yeah. I'm actually not a huge fan of spoken word style. So like mm. that kind of like maybe like like softer, like yeah, like 
witchy fairy tale thing. Yeah. I, I don't really like that part as much, but I mm. do prefer the like harder, more punk yeah. uh, like vocals. I actually love it. I love that transition, like the stark transition from like that, like screaming to then. And I love that they're like, like doing ballet and those yeah. fucking creatures with. <laughs> when they do the, 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 like uh, the happy part of the song, those creature mm-hmm. dancer things in the back, I was literally like laughing. Like it was so yeah funny to see them with the creepy outfits being really cute with their bodies it was like the contrast was really excellent and and whenever uh bambi won and they i don't uh you didn't watch it live right so i don't know if you watched like that part but whenever they won and they went up to the stage the the demon creatures came up with them and were like on the floor in full costume going like this and then they they both like hugged each other the two demons and then they both hugged bambi and picked bambi up and it was like it was like the amount of memes if they keep those creatures the amount of memes that are going to come from that is like crazy and i also love like this is the official entry so i don't mind like harping on it for too long but Mm -hmm. i love when they were talking about like having like a whole like queer artistic collective group of people that work together like it, they were talking about my friend made this and my other friend did my nails and my friend did that like i love this idea of like you know the entire persona of bambi thug and like everything that went into that performance was like i don't know because even like the songwriters and stuff like you look at them and they didn't they've never written any eurovision music they're all like alternative you know doing like metal music and that sort of thing like that's what they do and and they're not related to the eurovision world at all like i love it's refreshing to have something that's not like regurgitated songwriters that have written a hundred songs for eurovision already you know it's like a whole fresh new perspective i'm just so excited for ireland i did not expect to be an ireland stand this year but it's happening that's happening it's about damn time yeah yes it's about damn time well then we had the song judas so we went from like kind of devilish vibes and we went to judas um <laughs> with by j yellow l this one was you know it was cute um it was i there was a big disconnect for me between the 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 female singer and the guy and it yeah. was like and her voice almost was like hey <laughs> it like came out of, <laughs> it came out of nowhere like hey that da, da, da. i was like whoa um they seem cute though i like their interviews throughout it like i like them but like i was not vibing with this one it felt it was very flat for me uh i didn't really like this song either but i didn't think it was bad i just didn't really yeah. like it um when i do listen to hip-hop i don't normally like the kind of like like I don't I don't know if maybe inspirational rap is the word for it but mm-hmm. I don't know it was just it was a little bit too too it was a little too poetry spoken word and mm-hmm. um it like it lacked attitude I did yeah. like the girl but I agree they didn't really seem to like match together like I almost would have preferred to like have like one or the other mm-hmm. um I did like their outfits though yeah they looked cool the girl had on like a I don't know. It was like a, it was a very graphic print. And then it had kind of like, like structural, like pieces coming out of like the arms and sides. Mm, and I yeah. thought that it was really interesting. And her like hair was cool. Design. The like one white piece in it yeah. was really cool. Yeah. No, not bad. You know, it was cool, I guess. Um, so then we had uh, Elsha with their song, Go Tubbin. And okay. So here's the thing. Out of the studio tracks, this was my favorite going into it. Um, mm. And I, I, because again, them and um, Bambi Thug, it's actually fun, funny because they also like in all their hashtags on social media is like about like witches and stuff. So they seem like, like opposite ends of the same world, you know, mm. like they seem like they live within the same world in that way. Um, One's the goth friend. That's, yeah, that's the it's thing. Like, the colorful one and the, the black and white goth. You know, but they're both yeah. in the, their besties. Um, that's the vibe I get from them. But 
So this was a great song, and I loved the the message about um, just the Irish language and the loss of the Irish language and how, you know, so many people kind of lose their connection to that um, in Ireland, and you only know a few words here or there. And so it's kind of like spouting off these different, you know, words and like numbers and stuff in 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 Irish. But um, yeah, this one just didn't work live. Like, it really killed me seeing this because I will say they put a lot of effort into putting on a big performance like they had props they had like a, this one was really transformative with the stage but it was just like the sound mixing was not doing like and it wasn't great not their fault but like it wasn't doing them any favors because it was like the vocal was too high or the the instrumental was too low and so there were like whenever she's playing the the instrument it's so quiet and then she they thought to offer me a smoke but the 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 instrument's so quiet that it's like like we all know they're fake playing instruments but like it should be louder as if it's yeah. the same level as your vocals because it's supposed to sound like it's coming live um it was just a little it's a chaotic song and there's just it's really hard to pull off live and they i just don't think they really did it was just too chaotic live and it was not it needed some refinement yeah this one did not work at all for me i really wanted it to be over i thought it was like really grating mm. and i uh i see where like the video game influence came into it and here's the thing though i don't like video games <laughs> i don't play video games i find video games to be really annoying and i think mm. the music in video games is really annoying mm. so it was kind of like it was coming from a musical influence that i really do not connect with whatsoever and there was just like you said so much going on so many people and all these instruments and props and it and it sounded bad and yeah this one was like i was shocked actually watching it because everyone was talking about this song ahead of time and i was like really this this mm -hmm. okay but i haven't heard the studio recording i only saw the live yeah the studio track is really good it's like i don't know it's just it's really fine tuned which is what you would hope the studio track mm -hmm. to be but it did co still come second though so that's good. And oh. and I I want I mean it tied second with that boy band though. So Ooh. um <laughs> but I want I I was also just so excited to see something in Irish in in their national selection because that's just I mean we just have not gotten that in so long and this felt very personal to like Irish culture and to the Irish people and so it was it was very exciting to see this in the selection and i hope mm -hmm. that they i'm hoping with bambi winning and with them still being like a fan favorite coming second like i'm hoping that that's their sign to really take more risks in the future even if they have to keep this format which i think i did hear rumblings that they're like prepared to you know do a standalone selection mm -hmm. next year but oh. i'm really hoping that this is the sign of you know take some risks i'm hoping bambi does well just just so that it reassures them yeah. to keep Do you know what Gotubin means? I don't. Good. Hmm. Let's see. Um suddenly. Sudden. Suddenly. Yeah. Oh. So I don't know what the fuck. Well, I did they were like <laughs> They were saying in um she was saying in like the little interviews with the during the show that like this was just I guess it's just a word that like every Irish person knows. It's like one of the few Irish words that people so maybe it's like something they just throw in, you know. I don't know. Maybe it's it maybe it has something else to it that Yeah, Irish folks, uh let us know what Gatubin means because yeah, I'm looking at the uh like translation and I don't think I understand. I don't think I understand why that would be a particular word that would stand out to be something that would get chosen here. Because I don't think of suddenly to be like a word that we use a lot in English, no. at least. 
maybe it had there's like another level there or something yeah like that's what i'm wondering like maybe it's like a je ne sais quoi yeah it means something like you know i don't know yeah let us know irish folks what's up with the title katubin i'm just i just uh was looking it up and it says that uh she started out her career as a makeup artist and cruelty free beauty blogger and then she has video game music credits including the soundtrack to the big brother video game I love Big Brother. I'm gonna have you to look do. Into that. I'm gonna have to look into that. Do you play video games? <laughs> no, but here's the difference between you and me is that I want to be a gamer girl. I oh. want that to be my life. I love the aesthetic of video games and gaming, but I just, I'm like a very, like, I just cannot sit and do something like that that doesn't feel productive to my time. Yeah, totally. But Maxi Rainbow does come from, it was my username on Minecraft, and I was a Minecraft uh, YouTuber, <gasps> was how I started oh. off YouTube. And so oh my, my username God. on everything was Maxi Rainbow because of that. And then when I started doing drag, I needed to, I, you know, I was like trying to think of a drag name. And I was just like, well, I don't know, nothing ever stuck. Like, I was just like, I'm Maxi Rainbow. So that's where that comes from. Oh, my God. That's some deep lore right there. I always figured that it was like that that it was chosen as a drag name it didn't have like a yeah. life beforehand oh yeah. how about that i was actually my my drag name was maxine mcqueen <laughs> imagine cute. if i stuck with that oh <laughs> uh, maxine mcqueen is cute but um but i think maxi rainbow is better yeah well then next um we had the uh boy band next mm -hmm. in line with their song love like this this was like okay guys this was atrocious this yeah. was so bad like i genuinely i was scared going into this that because people were saying that they were a contender to win which they did end up you know kind of being a contender to win but after i saw this i was like there ain't no fucking way they're picking this entry <laughs> because this was horrible <laughs> these boys looked like they never performed a day in their life they looked like they were performing at a school talent show in a gymnasium they looked like they had they had first of all they literally looked like they were fucking 15 yeah. they had no charisma they weren't cute because they looked like toddlers it they sounded horrible not okay some of them sounded fine but it was like it just was not it was not giving that I and then the way y'all keep trying to tell us through all this that they are the next one direction fuck you louis walsh no they yeah, are not that and is ain't so nobody obnoxious be, yeah ain't nobody want to be the next i well i should say you don't want to be the next one direction because they disbanded they're done they were like 10 years ago you don't want to be the next one direction boy bands are out yes yes uh i hated this so much yeah uh next in line is a very appropriate name because the whole time i was thinking next do you remember that show on mtv next the dating show oh my god this show was insane it was a it was it was like you would put people on a bus like a tour bus and then oh, they would drive yeah. around and go on dates and then uh -huh. at any point like if somebody gave you the ick you could just go next and then yes. the date would be people over were and brutal on that it was it was a really stupid <laughs> show and it was so fake too um mm. and, but it was really iconic because there would be these things where people would like get out of the bus and it would show like three facts about them and yes. you, they always read kind of like two truths and a lie where it's like two of those things are probably true but then it will be like has a secret talent that he can bite off his own toenails or something you know like mm -hmm. it's just like w like weird shit um yeah, yeah, Shannon, 19 years old, nicknamed Shay, loves to rap freestyle in her car and is afraid of not going to heaven. There you go. Exactly. Just like that. <laughs> but okay, so side check. But yeah, the whole time I was thinking, like, please, like, I want this song to end. It is so just unbelievably derivative. It was, 
incredibly unoriginal, and especially after seeing things like Gatubbin and Doomsday Blue, which were highly, highly original songs that sounded like nothing I've ever heard before. This sounded like a million things I've heard before, and it wasn't even a good version of those things. They had no chemistry, no stage presence. There were five of them up there. Some of them were off. And if you have a five piece, you, it doesn't matter if four of you are on and one of you is off, you're going to sound like shit. And mm -hmm. they just, they didn't pull it off. It was so bad. But then the, the uh, judges or the panel, whatever we want to call them, tore into it. Yeah. And I was thinking, to, that was when I was really thinking like, this is a conversation for the producers to have and to not even have the song be part of the contest. If it's totally not viable, why the fuck is it here? Yeah, that was wild. And it's like, it's one of those things where it's hard because I'm like, well, you guys are saying exactly what I'm thinking. Well, yes, but... But you, yeah, no, no, that's not right. That's not... Yeah. It felt very, it, it just felt weird and wrong. And I mean, they also are still clearly very young. It's just like wrong to put that on like that. It felt... And then the, the strangeness of them being all so negative and then them still coming second place. Because then it's just like... So, the and then the gag was, so they started, they gave the international jury points first. And they gave... They gave next in line their 12 points. Seriously? Oh, yes. So you didn't see this. So, so is that why people were saying that the international juries okay. were trying to, like, sabotage? Because I, I didn't because, understand. And poor Devin from Wee Blogs was the presenter. He was one of the jury members. And he was the presenter of the points. And Wee Blogs have been getting dragged since then. And, and literally, they've even been liking tweets that are saying, like, girl, you know damn well Devin did not give this as 12 points. He was only the presenter. Oh my god. Of the points. But people are so mad. But I was pissed too because I was like, I'm sorry. So they Bambi Thug was third um in that. And then it was Erica Cody. And then next in line was their first, their 12 points. I said, oh fuck. I was like, oh, we're done. We're done. I see how this is gonna go. And then the gag was next came up. Then Irish national juries put this last. Right, rightfully so. So put this last. So the difference from the international juries putting the... And to be honest, I would have expected the international juries to put this last and the Irish juries to put this first. Given yeah. <laughs> what Ireland has selected, that's how I would have expected it to go. So I just want to say shout out to the Irish jurors because you guys are the reason why this did not win because it being put last made it... Uh, I remember watching the results and knowing before I think like we had like the top three and I was like, Bambi's going to win because there's no other way the points, even if they got 12 points from the public, it wouldn't have worked because of how it went. So mm -hmm. shout out to them. They saved us, wow. <laughs> but luckily it wasn't close like um, last year. Cause remember last year it was like a tie. Um Pretty much until it came down to the televote, I think. And then it was still like, you know, they were like first and second. Mm -hmm. Wild Youth and um, what her name, whatever her Connelly? name. Connolly? Connolly, yes. So it was like back and forth, back and forth. This was not close, really. It was almost a 10 point difference. So, so yes. And then last up we had to perform was Erica Cody with her song, Love Me Like I Do. And this was fine but this was just very um referential to so many things mm. and not unique or original in any way like yeah. from her voice from the song from the lyrics to the even her outfit with her Mugler jumpsuit that everybody's worn you know it's just like everything and like it's sad because I actually I love her her on social media has been great we, we gotta stand I love her Nothing against her. She's very talented. But this song was just so unoriginal, girl. Like, why? Because I feel like she could have really offered a slay if it was a better song. Yeah, I mean, I did like the song. Mm -hmm. um, but I 
I totally agree with everything you just said. Like it wasn't super original or exciting. Um, I also, I didn't really like the performance and the staging or the costumes. It just, I don't know. There was just so much to be desired and it just really, it really yeah. didn't hit. Yeah, this one almost felt like it just wasn't going to work on in the setting that it was in. Like this was one that needed to be on like an actual Eurovision type of stage with like really slick cameras that could come yeah. in from every angle and like more production. This one just didn't work for because like this they got like two cameras in this damn studio. You get a front view and like maybe a side. <laughs> yeah. For one of the sides. This, like, there was, it just, it didn't lend itself to the environment, um, unfortunately. But I feel like overall, this was a step up, in my opinion, for Iron. This was a step up oh, in terms of, of song quality, in terms of, I, even production, I felt like people seemed to have more opportunity for actual staging. G granted, we are, we're talking you know, this is the best of a bad bunch sort of situation. We're talking, you know, this was, it was, still wasn't great. But last year, girl, oh my God, whatever her name was that was out there trying to dance with the mullet. And she just was, <laughs> she was shame. trying her, yes, she was trying her best, but they just like, ain't nobody got nothing out of that. Like, you know, like yeah. nobody had any staging at all. There was no such thing as staging there. This, like there were, there, it was clearly like people had the opportunity to have, you know, good choreographed dancers to have props, to have LEDs and have LED lighting effects and stuff like there. It seemed more so. Yeah. Huge step up for Ireland. Happy to see them moving in the right direction regarding the way that they're treating the contest, especially after the head of delegation has been like uh, consistently defensive whenever their particular situation gets brought up. Uh, like I, I wasn't super confident that there was going to be improvement. So the fact that they've had improvement is really good. And I really hope that the rumors are true that they are doing a standalone contest next year and actually giving the artists a better shot at their first presentation. Yeah. Yeah. But shout out my people and we love you for it. Um, And then we move on to Luxembourg. So Luxembourg first of fucking all bitch I we had I had no fucking idea going into this selection like truly this was a mystery I mean I think for everybody because we you know they haven't been in the contest for like over 30 years so we have no idea what what was going to come from this and I tuned in I clicked on this damn live stream and I was immediately blown away by the production of this this genuinely looked like Eurovision it felt like I was watching Eurovision. They had like opening opening sort of performances from past Eurovision, multiple past Eurovision winners from Luxembourg. They did a little kind of recap of Luxembourg's entries. I was like, oh my God, I forgot. Luxembourg's like a damn powerhouse in Eurovision. I think they have something like five wins. Like they have an absurd amount of wins. And so it's like crazy to like see all of that. And then they got the winners in there and then they have a flag parade sort of thing where all the artists walk out and it was wild. Like they really put their whole Luxem Luxembourg into this. Well, they what they put is a lot of fucking money into it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, between the LED floor staging, the LED backstaging, the giant ass arena that they put it in, um, all of the artists, that they brought in to perform. Like mm -hmm. they had brought in like four different Eurovision winners to perform their songs. Like they put a tremendous amount of money into this and Luxembourg is known to be a very wealthy country. So there's no real surprise there that they would do that. But um, yeah, I mean, I was like really, really impressed that they did have such an incredible production. Uh, we can get into some other details about that production, but I'll just say right off the bat, uh, it's such a shame that the level of production was not matched by the quality of song, uh, because I feel like that actually is a lot more important at the end of the day than the quality of the LEDs on the floor. Yeah, or how many Alexander Ribacks you can pay to bring in. Yeah. Well, and you know what's, was he there? He was. He performed. Oh, I missed that part. Thank God. Um, 
But it, it's almost reminiscent of when they put Tom Lieb on the fucking Eiffel Tower. And it was like, you can polish a turd, girl, but it's still a turd. Just because the mm -hmm. turd's performing on the Eiffel Tower does not make it a Eurovision <laughs> winner. You know? Yes. Oh, all righty. Mm -mm. All right. So first up, we had the song Believer by Joel Marquis. Marquez. Um, This one was really good like, okay so for the first right off the right out the gate first song i'm seeing right performance i was like oh my god luxembourg y'all brought it luxembourg i mean i got it from the intro but even from the songs i was like you know none of the songs when i listened to them really blew me away necessarily one of them did but none of them really like nothing was crazy amazing that like i immediately added to my playlist so when I saw this, though, I was like, oh, y'all are amplifying these really well, because I just thought this was a very um, strong performance. It was like, you know, it was fine. Looking back at it, it was fine in the sea of all of the performances. But on its own, he was a really strong singer. He kind of sounded like, how do you say it? Ho Hosier? Ho Hosier? Ho Hosier? Hosier? I don't know. He's Irish, I believe. Um, I don't like him. No, because he he's sounded... Irish. Just I don't like his music. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't really like his music either. But like his actual voice, I mean, I guess even the song, it kind of was giving that vibe a very like dramatic big ballad. And the I just was very impressed with the production, the dancers. The, I mean, he was cute. I thought he was really cute. Um, there's nothing wrong with the song, but it was just kind of like there at the end like at the end it wasn't one i was thinking about i guess um but he yeah. had like these four dancers he was in this suit there was a lot of fog it was cool like it was like it was good yeah i mean it was it was fine like it was well performed it you know it had you know like nice little dancers um the outfits i wasn't crazy about they reminded me of the outfits that were worn by andre dutu's dancers in romania last year with the song mm. statues I was, like, so deep into Romania last year, so that kind of cinched into my memory. Um, it was kind of like that, like a little, like, chest harness strappy yeah. thing going on. Um, so, like, I thought the song was fine, but I totally forgot about it as soon as it was over. Yeah. And, like, whatever yeah. they did, the recap, I was like, oh, yeah, that one. Hmm. Uh, but I was really impressed by it also because of, like, it being a new national selection and just seeing right off that, like, okay, they have something yeah. strong. And I did not listen to any of these songs beforehand. So just like with Ireland, uh, when I watched the selection, it was the first time I was seeing them, like, as mm. a live. I was watching them like a local. I'm so envious of you for that because I really like need to listen to them immediately when they come out. I need to join in on the discourse. Um, well, I was always, I, I started watching Eurovision as a local where I never mm. followed it ahead of time. I would just watch it on the night. So I think mm -hmm. that sort of is the way that I typically do it. I don't normally go and listen to the songs ahead. Yeah. Well, then we had the song Finally Alive by Edson. And okay. Okay. I was shocked by him because first of all, I did not know that he was kind of like, I didn't know that he was a little like, I didn't realize that. And so, I mean, I hope I'm not, you know, misspeaking, but like, I was like, okay, wait, immediately stand card. Cause he seemed fun. Like I was immediately like, oh, okay. Because I remember he was kind of a front runner going into this like selection um, based on, I don't know if he was so much a front runner after the songs were released, but he was a front runner going into it when all the artists were announced. And so I was like excited because I was like, well, he seems fun. I didn't like the song personally. For me, it's, it feels very dated. He's a great performer, but it sounds like music I heard like 10 years ago, like mm. that we were getting from Justin Timberlake and Pharrell Williams and like that kind of vibe. But he seemed great. He seemed great. And it I made me him. sad because I wanted more, I wanted a better song for him, but. Yeah, I pretty much agree with you. I thought he was wonderful. I really liked him. So um, I did get the sense that he probably has better songs. Yeah. Um, But this was my winner. So mm. basically as I was watching, I was like, okay, I really liked that one a lot. And I definitely liked it more than the first one. So it was kind of like every song that came up, it was 
do I like this song more than I like Deadson's song? Mm-hmm. And nobody, so it's going to go downhill for me from here. Uh, with really? My, yeah, oh. it's, it's all downhill from here. Um, but I really, I really did like this one. It at least like made me feel something. Like mm-hmm. I at least like felt like happy about it. And like, I felt like I want to check out his other music. Mm-hmm. You should, because they're all better than this. Um, <laughs> then we had uh, Naomi Aie with their song, Palm palmier sur terre. <laughs> Let me get my mom in here. She speaks French. Um, no, this was my favorite going into the selection. This is the fifteen-year-old, right? Um, this was my favorite going into the selection. I think the song is just an absolutely beautiful French ballad. I just think it's gorgeous. I literally, this is still my favorite studio track, but I was sad because her performance was unfortunately like you could just tell she's a 15 year old she does not have like as much experience Mm -hmm. and that was a fucking huge venue like that was definitely the biggest venue she's ever performed at and I just think you could tell that there were a lot of nerves and she seemed very restrained in terms of her performance and like her emotions that she was giving. But her vocal was still amazing. She still performed very well in that sense. But it's just, you know, this is what a national selection is good for is like, you know, maybe take a few more years Mm -hmm. because you got the talent and you have the vibe like this song was amazing. We just need a little more experience, but that's okay. Yeah, it's nice to see national finals as being artist development and not just like uh, hit factories. Yeah, yeah. Did you like the song? No. Um, I didn't like the song. I, I, I like you said, you know, she's she's fifteen and she's talented, but the performance wasn't as as good as you know as good as I would need the performance to be for me to forget about not liking the song. Mm-hmm. you know because if it's like if they knock it out of the park and it's a song that i don't like well they still knocked it out of the park um, yes but yeah. i mean nothing against her because like yeah it's i can't sing at all on a good day so um to be able to do it on like a big stage and and it's like the pressure of it being the first like the return for luxembourg that's a lot yeah yeah i'm sorry cookie cookie so then next up, we had the song Drop by Angie and Rafaela. And they're amazing singers. That was what I was most impressed with this performance was I was like, damn, like even them together, they are very powerful. They were really, really, really good performers and singers. I didn't like the song for me. It didn't go anywhere. Um, it was definitely like it felt like it was trying to be this kind of crazy, powerful, anthemic thing. But sometimes you try a little too hard to do something mm-hmm. and it just doesn't really read. You know what I mean? Yeah. It reads yeah, as I, almost nothing. Yeah. I I am not a huge fan of duets most of the time. Um I would have probably liked to see like just one or the other have a song. I think maybe yeah. maybe it wasn't necessarily the right song for them maybe together. Either either maybe it would have been better to see them apart or see them have a different song to sing together. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you know, but definitely on their own together, whatever, they're very, very talented artists and amazing singers, amazing performers. So I'm very excited to see, you know, what they have in store for them. And we actually have an exclusive announcement. So for those of you who remember a few episodes ago, we had our good friend of the pod, friend of the pod, (laughs) uh, Elliot Harris, join in to uh, replace Renata for a week. And (laughs) He let us know that he was working with Rafaela on a song in the future that he was working on a song with her for the selection as well. But they were like, you know, the song didn't work out for the national selection, but we're going to keep in touch and we're going to keep working on your next single. So he gave us that reveal. But now guess what, y'all? We got the song title. Yep. And so some song- details. We got the whole scoop. We got the Baskin Robbins taste test scoop of every flavor yes, over a joint sleigh. Now, not too much on my com- my employer's competitor. 
Oh, oh. <laughs> this is we are not sponsored by any ice cream companies. Yes. No, I mean, but you know, hey, if they want to give me a raise. Um, but anyways, <laughs> <laughs> the song so the song is going to be called Storm Clouds. Mm. I don't know. Dramatic. I don't know what story. I don't know. I don't know what kind of a noise storm clouds would um would make. But uh like, and <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh the song is described as having gospel elements that is powerful, anthemic, with lots of energy, no matter what the tempo is. Imagine, you know, were you a destiny chukunyar? Destiny Chukunyere Stan mm -hmm. back in the day, back in 2020. Oh, you know I was, yeah. Yes, I was as well. All of my love. Like a river coming down. Every yes. river my child. child. Don't so if you were a <laughs> So if you were a fan of Destiny Chukunyere back in 2020, I'm just saying you might be a really big fan of this song. So keep an eye out. You know, it may be in the future, maybe. Maybe, you know, in February. Who knows? Who knows? Keep an eye out for those kind of details. Um, but I'm very excited because, like I said, I was obsessed with them as performers and as singers. And this sounds very promising, you know? So definitely follow Elliot and Rafaela if you guys want to know exactly when the song is coming out. Because that's a that's our friend of the pod. Mm -hmm. So, And I'm so excited to see that they're, they're coming through with the song and they're working together and... And it's also exciting to, you know, see artists and songwriters develop these relationships and, and go on and do other stuff after just the Luxembourg Song Contest. You know, it's nice to see mm -hmm. that, like, you actually gain something from that and you gain contacts and you gain, you know, people that you want to work with artistically. Um, I love to see that. Yeah. And it's always great when there's new music that comes out basically right after new music came out. Yeah, like that's good for the artists. It's good to have them out there. It keeps people excited about their music. Like it's too bad. Like when you have people in national finals who are like are really talented, and then you just don't ever hear from them again. Like they, yeah. you know, you hear their side. And maybe in their country they have their followings, but you know, outside of the country, you know, it's kind of hard sometimes. Maybe if they're not putting out music super frequently, yeah. um, to just kind of stay on the radar. So I'm excited for this song, Storm Clouds. Yeah. Yes, activating my stand card. Mm. <laughs> well, then we had the song Devil in the Detail by One Last Time. Bitch, immediately I was impressed by the pyro. Mm. There was so much pyro. I was like, damn, we dropping a lot of that on a national selection song that ain't even that good. <laughs> um, with Pizza Love. This song is just, it's just not giving, like, okay, the main issue for me is the lyrics are so, like, well, you know when you're singing so intensely about something and then you listen to what they're saying you're like there now there ain't no reason to be that emotional you know devil in the detail like what the fuck are you <laughs> saying what are you saying and why were they dressed like fucking early 2000s emo school band rockers when you are pushing 40 no offense renata <laughs> oh my god please okay i'm ending the call bye <laughs> Uh, no, it was just not, it wasn't working for me. Yeah, I didn't like it either. And this is, <laughs> it's just kind of dumb, but um, when they did their little intro or whatever, I fully expected the girl to be the singer. Mm. And when he came out and started singing, I'm like, Okay, but where's the girl? Because I am really I partial to female vocalists. And yeah. I was like, oh, oh, it's the guy singing. And then I'm like, where is the where is the girl? And she was like the keyboard player, just like in the back in the back, standing there pretending to play a keyboard. I was like, oh man. Um, but uh yeah, this one really didn't do it for me at all. I was totally disconnected from this song. It's also generally not the type of music I listen to so it, kind of like there were a lot of things going against it right from the get-go and they really would have had to knock it out of the park for me to be uh won over same like with the um Miss Naomi song hey now not too much on Miss Naomi um <laughs> I'm just kidding um no that's how I also feel because it's like rock songs whenever there's something that's not your genre at all and it's not a lot of people's genres like 
I mean, uh, rock has a huge audience, of course, but it really takes a an amazing rock song, especially with Eurovision. Because I will say, like, I don't think rock is generally a genre that does amazing in Eurovision. Maybe we don't get it as often, but it really takes that amazing, you know, different, unique something to stand out in Eurovision. Yeah. And and this was not this was not yeah. it. Um, there we don't have rankings for any of the song other than the top three. It just gave us a super final ranking. Yeah. Um, well, then we had the song Drowning in the Rain by Crick. And OK, immediately when I first listened to the song, for me, it was definitely um, it was this one and Naomi's song that were my favorites. What pushed Naomi over the top for me was it was a little more original because for me with this song, it's it's very Elsie Bay. It's very Elsie Bay signature style. The thing is, she's the co-writer. She's the writer on the song. So it's like, okay, we're not copying it, but it's like, we've heard this song before. Like, and when it comes from Elsie Bay, it's like, okay, good. This is her style, but this is a new artist. And it literally sounds like, I mean, it literally sounds like her first song from M MGP, pretty much. Yes, so... I did not realize that the song was actually written by Elsie Bay. And I had heard in conversation, like, like, like I, you know, seen people talking about Elsie Bay in relation to this song, but I thought they were just drawing comparisons. I didn't know that she was involved. And mm -hmm. then I watched this performance and I was like, whoa, damn, this really does sound like an Elsie Bay song. Like, holy shit, if my eyes were closed, I would be sure I was listening to Elsie Bay, who I love, by the way. Actually, yeah. one of the first interviews that I ever did was Elsie Bay over really? on the East Spot, right when I was starting out. I had reached out to her back when she did Death of Us. Um, it was right after I moved to Pittsburgh, actually. I remember recording that call, like, in the closet, uh, like, with my stuff uh -huh. not even unpacked. Um, and she, like, gave me a chance and had a nice conversation with her. So I stand, Elsie Bay. Really yes, we person. we stand. Lord knows. I Yeah, knows. love I'm her. Obsessed. Um, so it was like, okay, well, I feel better now knowing that it actually was an Elsie Bay song and not a ripoff. Because it true, if, if she hadn't been involved with the song, it would have been like, seriously, you better pay her because... You ripped off her song. You ripped off her style. Yeah. But it is her style. So it is kind of funny because she's written other songs for people. She wrote Witchwoods by Emmy. Did and she? Yeah. I didn't know that. So she's written other songs for other people, but those songs weren't in the LC Bay style. Yes. Song. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I was looking at the list of other songs that, that she had written. Um, and yeah, that none of them are like that. Like that one literally sounds like it's pulled from her catalog, which I also think is it made it it made me realize, oh, my God, she has such a distinctive style of music. That's like a great sign because that's like so signature her. It's very yeah, hard it, for artists to find that. It is really hard. It is hard. Like she's got a really clear vision of what she wants to sound like. Uh, I thought for sure that this was going to win. Yeah. For sure. I thought it was going to win. I, I thought for sure it would win. I also thought if this song was in French, no way another song would have won. Because I had a feeling they wanted to pick a song that was at least partially in French. And mm. um, I feel like if this would have been sung in French, it maybe would have won. But I did think even fully English, it, it was going to win just because the performance was also really good. Like the song was good yeah. and the performance was good on a personal level. I would have liked to see Elsie Bay finally get to Eurovision, even if it's not her, if just a songwriting credit. But um, fortunately that didn't happen. And um, yeah. I'm, I'm sad about that. Cause I would have been at least a little bit excited if uh, this had won because of Elsie. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the struggle is like, there was the part of me, I will say there was a part of me that going into this that I didn't want this to win because I want Elsie Bay to go to Eurovision with her signature style. Mm. And if if this went, then Elsie Bay made it a few years later and then everybody's like, girl, we already heard this sound. And it's like, no, but that's some bullshit because that was her fucking song. Uh, okay, <laughs> you know? I see. I see what you mean. But like, you know, 
given the circumstances of the selection, like after I watched everybody, this was definitely who I wanted to win. Like she was fucking gorgeous. That outfit was fucking gorgeous. It, it was beautiful. She was an amazing, confident performer. When she grabbed that microphone <laughs> on the beat, I was like, damn, she's winning it for me. Um, it This was amazing. I really, I really think this should have won. I think that this also, this would have been a good almost callback to also those classic Luxembourg ballads. Like, yes, it's not in French, but it like reminds me, like when I look at the lineup of Luxembourg, specifically like their winners, mm. most of them are like these female ballads. And this would have fit in so well with that lineup. Like it's it's so unique, yeah. it's different, but it's like almost, hey, call back to what we wow. were doing so long ago, amplified, modern, but still Luxembourg. You know? I totally agree. I totally agree. It would have definitely matched their history, but yeah. also be contemporary at the same time. And I think it's a shame that they didn't pick this one. Yeah, I agree. But hopefully Luxembourg maybe, maybe hopefully stays around and uh, maybe she'll come back because yeah. um, she's amazing. Then we had the song Hold On by Khaled. Is that how you would say that? Chalid? Khaled? Chalid? Chalid? Um, well, okay. This song was so bland, but man, this man was fucking <laughs> hot. He was so fine. And the fucking, the, the, the suit that's kind of like open, the black and white suit, but kind of open. And then it's like cut at the, right at the elbow. And then lace gloves. The styling was on point. He looked so fucking good unfortunately the song was not really giving anything and he didn't even have really the vocal to you know to keep up with it so yeah I think this maybe was one of the weaker performances of the night unfortunately yeah. but somebody has to be the weakest performer on the night I mean it's just always how it is it's how it, ha it happens like that sometimes and we had some really good performers so um yeah, this one, this one was not on my radar as being one to to watch for the win or to put on the playlist. Yeah, yeah. But then we had the song Fighter by Tali, who did end up winning the Luxembourg Song Contest and will be representing Luxembourg in Eurovision 2024 in Malmö. For me, this was eaten. I thought this was really really good like after i watched all the performances it was definitely between crick and tally i felt like i was still team crick but i really did see the pathway for this one to win i just thought she was a very confident performer and i did love the mix of french and english and it sounds like music i listen to it sounds like angel it sounds like that kind of french pop that i love that mixes languages and like it's just it's very french in that way um and i thought this was really good it's just yeah it's unfortunate because i really don't like her and i really don't want to see her at eurovision but um it sucks whenever somebody has a really good song it's like i'm gonna be objective i'm gonna say the song is good but i don't like you yeah, so I I didn't really like this song very much. First of all, uh, I do not give extra points for French language. I I'm sorry to the francophones and the uh, <laughs> people who love French, but this is not a language that I find to be particularly beautiful or appealing like I, I, I as, as Americans it's kind of like the everyone you always hear that oh French is the most beautiful language um but like I grew up around people speaking Slavic languages and kind of being like well those are those sound way better yeah, um Polish so, is sick. <laughs> uh so I I personally don't uh I, I don't I don't want anyone to take that from me saying like fuck France that's not what I'm saying do not take that actual phrase <laughs> out of context because that's not what I'm saying it's just like I I don't I it, 
it's not something that gets me excited. So even going back and forth between like like the English part, like it doesn't make it feel any, it doesn't boost it up for me either way. So it's like, if it's an amazing song and some of it's in French, okay. But um, it just was, it wasn't doing it for me. Also, I didn't feel like as a like pop song that it was particularly like inventive or interesting. Yeah. It just did still feel kind of in the same track as just what we've always like the what we've always seen with like the girl bop and and I like girl bops but it's like they have to there has to be something that really stands out about it and like I yeah. didn't feel excited for this song once it was over like by the time the show was over I was 110% really I wanted I wanted Edson but Edson didn't make it through the super final yeah. so uh once Edson was out I was like Okay, I actually don't really care about watching the show anymore. I do not care about any of these other songs, like particularly other than maybe Crick song. Um, I would absolutely not pay 99 euro cent to vote for any of these songs. So I did not vote in this contest. Um, oh, could we have voted? I think so. I kept seeing people like there were people with Damn, screenshots with like Turkish, boats. like the Turkish money that they spent on it and stuff. So, mm. oh, unless maybe they were like Turkish people, but, but how many, I don't think that many Euro fans are in Luxembourg. So there had to have been at least a, a certain level of. Yeah, that's uh, true actually. Yeah. Uh, international voting, but I didn't care enough about anything to vote. Um, and actually the show went on for fucking ever after this. Um, and it was, it started to be like, okay, can we please wrap it up? Because it's like performances and performances. And, and it got to the point where it was like, I had to take the dog for a walk. I had literally, it was like, when are there, we going to get some results? I took my dog for a walk, was gone for 25 minutes. I started screen recording on my computer so that I could take the dog in case they chose a winner while I was gone and then I could rewatch it. I got back, they still hadn't given results or they had just started giving the jury results. And it was like, okay, yeah. well, finally something. But then they gave the jury results, but then I think they like did another perform. It was just like, it took so yeah. long. It was the San Remofication of uh, the Luxembourg Song Contest. Yeah. And they are just starting out like, please, you guys, it does not need to be three plus hours long. No, literally, because I was, I had been, I was watching them on my way to work, on the bus, on my way to work. I had written my notes on all the songs and everything. I had seen all the performances. I got to work. I clocked in. Girl, I was working for a while. And I go to check my phone and I was expecting to see some winners, people selected for Eurovision and no, and, and nothing came from Luxembourg yet. And I was thinking, the fuck? I was like, I've been working for a few hours <laughs> and I watched the, all the performances before work. Like that was wild, but you know, an amazing show and definitely, I mean, I say, keep this energy up. Uh, if you, if Luxembourg continues and like sticks around in Eurovision, I don't know why I have in my head. They're just here for a one-off year. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, but I, I hope that they keep this energy up. Just get better songs. Just get better songs next year because this is great. The perform get, or the, the production. Well, the production was great, but the problem that I have with the production now that I know is that they didn't do it in house. And mm -hmm. I thought because they had put out like that in order to be in the contest as a singer, you had to have a connection to Luxembourg. I thought that it was like they were going for a homegrown vibe for their show i thought that it would have been the luxembourg singers luxembourg songwriters luxembourg production but a lot of the songwriters came from other countries which is okay but i would have liked to see not just the singer the performer in fact i would prefer a foreign performer and a luxembourg songwriter yeah but still even then it's like no actually if you're if you're going to make it a rule that you have to be from there like it should at least be a little bit more and then to use they use an israeli producer which is also strange to use a producer so far away if they chose a french producer or a german producer to help out that would make sense because you could get on a train from paris to luxembourg mm -hmm. you know and be there in a couple hours so they were flying crews over to do this show and it just it's kind of just like 
why though? Like if you, if this is your time to come back and you want to show off what you've got, like, why don't you actually show us what you've got? Whereas what they showed us was singers who happen to have lived in uh, Luxembourg, plus a whole bunch of money that got spent to bring people in from somewhere else. So what we saw was their money on display yeah, and a couple people holding microphones from Luxembourg. And that just seems like a weird way to come back if you're going to make make it be about like, and, and then to it choose does. a song too that doesn't match anything like about the really musical history that we know of Luxembourg. It just all seems a bit weird. Yeah. And also just there's like an uncomfortable, you know, elephant in the room in regards to whom she dedicated her song to, which is, you know, okay. So she dedicated her song. Well, we'll just talk about it. We got it. Because I went yeah. a little hard on her, too. So I have to explain why. So she dedicated her song to her, her brother, who is a fighter in the IDF. And so it just feels very uncomfortable for someone to essentially say, hey, this song is dedicated to. And in and in my brain, when I hear that, it's also like then what this song is kind of about is it's dedicated to, you know, your brother who's an IDF soldier, but also like just, it feels weird because now under all the comments of all the Eurovision social media posts too are like spamming flags of not of the country that um, she's representing, but it seems like there's this whole narrative now that almost she's representing this other country. So she's representing Israel almost because of her saying that that's what the song is dedicated to. And also um, now with like the production company, everything like that, all that, it's just like, it's very ick. It's very ick, the whole energy. It's just, I'm really not loving the way that this, all this stuff is going for Eurovision this year. Yeah. I mean, I think back to like, like when the Iraq, I'm old, oh my God. But when like the Iraq war was going on, like if somebody would have won a song contest and said, I'm dedicating this song to my brother who's fighting in Iraq, like the message to the Americans at that time would have been like, that's that's a message of support. For, yeah. It's not, yeah. It's that's a message of support for not just your brother. Because, exactly. Because it's like the, the messaging of the song is can be directly connected to that like so then yeah. it, it feels like you're almost trying to create an anthem in of support to those who are committing genocide possibly yeah and yeah. it is it it all like you said too it is weird because it does start to bring up the idea of wait i thought you were supposed to be from luxembourg yeah and it it's really like the social media channels, it's it's almost disturbing when you go through the comments, just the way that people are talking in them. Well, uh, there's a lot of really disturbing stuff that I've seen happening. And I've actually just kind of stayed off Twitter the past couple of days because I've seen some people say some really, really gross stuff also about Tali. Like you can feel however you want to feel about her, but like yeah. wishing negative things to happen to people because you don't like them. Like that, yeah. that is, that is the, that is always the wrong position to have if yes. you, that you should never wish harm on other people. Yeah. And that's uh, kind of like why people want the conflict to end because we don't want anybody to get hurt regardless yeah. of who they are. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and that's, it just, you know, it's it's hard to, you know, talk about because you don't want to ever feel like, you know, you don't ever want to hurt anybody in that way. And, and you know, and it sucks because, I'm you know, she's she's a lovely girl. Like, she's amazing. She's an amazing performer. And, and I don't, and I love, I, like I said, I love the song. So it's just, it's it's sad to see something so amazing. Honestly, she just really shouldn't have, dedicated she shouldn't have said that because she could have said my family i'm dedicating yeah. it to my family who's always fighting for me exactly it, but, it that's she really because that took it from because she had my full support until that 
that was what made me feel like, oh, okay, so wait, no, it's not you even. It's actually like the song. It's what the song represents. It's the message you're sending going to Eurovision. That is what you're, you want to tell the world. That is what you are, you know, delivering. And it's not just you. It's not even just what you support, you know, because that's all that was under question before. Mm -hmm. But now it's well, like, no, you, you tied it directly to the song. I would like to hear a little bit more from her, though, because yeah. all we really have is the words of the song and yes. the shout out to the brother, yeah. which on its own is innocuous and context is questionable. Um, yeah. it, it would be nice to hear more from her. And I wonder how insulated she is i actually hope that she's extremely insulated from everything that gets talked about online because it's just generally speaking it's not super healthy especially no. for younger artists to uh experience the type of like extremes that people can go to yeah. when they're behind the safety of their keyboards um so i i don't know how much she knows about what's going on and what people are saying about yeah. her and if and when she's going to make some kind of a statement and what that will be and if possibly the the delegation is just going to keep her really potentially like segregated from all that like i have a yeah. feeling they're going to be screening interviewers really tightly for her yes yes for sure so you know it's always bad it, it's honestly such a shame when people win a contest and it, it immediately turns into like something like a, a negative vibe around the win that is yeah that's always too bad it should be like a moment of celebration like bambi thug got their like moment of excitement and celebration and things didn't turn negative whereas things are turning really negative yeah. things are turning like negative on my social channels about bambi thug but well um well it the whole thing too is it's like everyone was so excited for Luxembourg and it's yeah. one of those things like like some people say like oh if people are talking about you negatively at least they're talking about you but like I don't think that's really true here and I don't mm -hmm. think it's good that Luxembourg is starting off with a lot of like less than uh positive feedback not a good yeah. sign yep well, then we had Norway. Um, so we had the third semifinal of Melody Grand Prix. Um, and um, the last of the semifinals, we will now have heard all of the songs. Um, and, oh, what a last semifinal this was. Um, this, to me, was the worst. Well, no, no, never mind. I think that first one was. I don't know. Um, this one Norway was... fucking sucks this year. I'm sorry. Yeah. This, this national final was like truly unwatchable. This was where I kind of was like, okay, yeah, Max, like stop lying to yourself. Yeah. Stop telling You've yourself. Seen the light. <laughs> You've seen I the saw northern the... lights. Norway I saw the is green falling off. Lights. Ugh. Um so, anyways, let's get into these songs. I didn't watch the live show, so I have nothing to comment. Um I'm sure it was great though, but so the first song it wasn't we, though we watched the recaps and it was not great. Oh, you mean like the, the like the present presenting oh, the he, you know oh, the actual production? Yeah, wow, well, yeah. Um, so the first song we had was "Mare" by Vidor Villa. Again, I like the song. I do not care. I do not care. I like the song. I don't care. Um. But it's very basic. It's like redundant. It's done before. It's so like whatever. But I like the song. I'm sorry. I would have personally picked this as a qualifier over um Anne Princess is who I would have picked over this. But I like the song. I I didn't like the song. Like this to me was one that wouldn't even make it to the second chance Andre Johnson round of Melfests. Mm. Like this would be left in the pre semi fucking heats. Um, just there's just absolutely nothing new here at all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then, uh, well, to be honest, from that to something you know, a little more original was Waltz of Death by Mistra, <laughs> and okay. Norway, you were so unserious for this because what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> this was like, okay, it was 
it was it was okay uh, it was so theater it was so dramatic i felt like the man needed more of a moment like it was pretty much all the woman with this guy in the background and he's the most endearing character of this um duo and it was you know giving budget phantom of the opera i'm not gonna disagree with you you know i hated this right yeah 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 okay yeah yeah, yeah. uh i was laughing out loud at the dexter kill room sheets that they right? had up. but it did fit the like top i mean waltz of death mm. hello um yeah it was okay you know i hated this but i like this more than gothminster no i like Ain't this no way. more yeah i i like this more no, um no no <laughs> but i don't really like either of them at all so that's not really saying much yeah um it was well performed though yeah yeah i just nothing about it impressed me um I guess in the way of like Gothminster, Gothminster, and also like that woman that was like moaning, opera operatically moaning, like that impressed me seeing that live. This one, there wasn't anything that like made me go, wow, you know, to take it over the edge. Like, cause like none of those songs I loved just on the song alone, but they had something live that made me excited. Yeah. And this didn't have that for me. It was very like cruise ship in October. Yeah. Vibes. Yeah. Exactly. Um, which sounds kind of fun, to be honest. I think maybe um, we have a new sponsor for Eurovision. Um, and I think maybe they should do a Eurovision in October and they can invite, you know, Goth Minister, Mistra, <laughs> they can, uh, Vampire Bambi Thug. Lies, Bambi yeah. Thug, yes. Oh my God, there's I, lots of Eurovision. I really hope that the cruise thing means that they actually will finally have a cruise for people to buy as a hotel because they've talked about that for years oh oh there's accommodation it's just oh we're gonna bring a cruise ship in and and then it never happened it never Which fucking is happened genius. it's genius but maybe now that is maybe they sought that out specifically because that is how you get a cruise ship that's how you make it worth it because it's not just that they're getting the money from people staying in the cruise ship they're getting they're they are an actual sponsor and their name is going to be said over and over and over and over again yes yeah to millions well, of people I've never had interest in going on a cruise, Me but either, if never. there was, like, if there was a, okay, I know there was one, but if there was, like, a proper Eurovision organized Eurovision cruise, I'd go, I would, I would try to go to it. Well, we are going to take a ferry to yes. Estonia, and uh, the ferry thing, like, they do cruises in like Finland and Sweden that are like that. We're like, yeah, like, well, Katia the ferry done looks a whole fucking bunch huge. Of, um, yeah, no, they're so, legitimate cruise ships. They just don't yeah. have cabins. Like, you just don't sleep mm -hmm. there. Um, but then there's other ones that do have cabins that are really cruise ships. And they'll, like, go from, like, Helsinki to Stockholm and then turn back around. And then you have, like, concerts. Like, I would totally do one. Like, I would yeah. probably, if they did that in the summer, I would probably fly over for the weekend for the cruise. Yeah. If you could, if I could, like, get cheap uh, flights. Because that would kind of like be worth it. Like it is an experience, but no, I've also never wanted to go on a cruise. Yeah. Specifically, okay. I think I'd be more likely to want to do a cruise like over there than I would like, I don't want to go in the ocean. Like the ocean ocean. I don't want to go. I wouldn't want to go in the ocean ocean. And I don't want to be on a cruise ship with like Barb and Billy Bob from yeah. Atlanta. Like I don't want. I do not want to be. Well, not I too wanna... much on Atlanta. Not too much on um from on Wee Wee Blogs on William. Is he from Atlanta? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, but like, I wouldn't want to be on a boat, trapped on a boat with a bunch of normies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. That's what like something like Eurovision. It's such like a um community. Yeah. Uh, that it would be such so fun to do something like that. They used to do drag cruises. It used to be one of the prizes uh, when you won Drag Race was like a headline on the on the drag oh. cruise. And I mean, it was like a thing that was done every single year. It was like a huge thing for a really long time. I don't know why they stopped doing that because I actually was so cool. I always wanted to go on that, but I was like 15 at the time. Thank God I didn't. The gay cruises too. Yeah, I but I don't want to go like on something thing. like that because everybody's yeah. just having sex. Like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> 
<laughs> like it's a, it's a it's a crew it's a cruise party on a cruise ship. Yeah. Like you go cruising on the cruise. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do that. No, thank you. I want to see Katia. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe and, him. Well, if, and, he, and if he's, he's one a... of the people, <laughs> then sure. I'm, I'm like, wait, actually, I think the Katia cruise yeah, is actually... kind of a gay cruise when you break it down. Well, so yeah, a Eurovision old... <laughs> cruise would be a gay cruise. Yeah, also would be a gay cruise. <laughs> anyway, speaking of gay, uh, yeah. Takes <laughs> Me to Heaven by Thomas Jensen or Jensen, Jensen. Hey, okay. This was gay. Um, yeah. And it was fun, but I felt like his voice was very weak in all parts, except for when he did like the super high pitch um, notes and like he did the whistle, you know, when you're somebody like, oh, wow, you can like, you can sing because that's really impressive that you hit those notes, mm -hmm. but like you sound really bad everywhere else was kind of what I was getting from this. Um, and I didn't understand the hola mi bebe be styling. Oh, that the outfit's going so on. bad. Why? Like, why are... It didn't make any sense to me, but the song was pretty good. Yeah, I like the song. It was probably one of the better songs in the semi for me. Yeah, I agree. I feel like I probably would have liked to have this one go through, given what we have here. Um, I, at first, didn't... I, I, I was doing other things around my apartment while I was watching these performances so i would like i would like look at them but then i would like look at something else for a minute so at the beginning of the song i was like taking my laundry out of the dryer so i could just like hear the song and i was like oh wait mm -hmm. I was, like, I was, I baby take me to so yeah so i i you know i stopped with the the laundry and i walked over to look at it and i was like whoa that is not what i thought the singer was going to be looking like I was like, okay, oh, no. like it's not like I had a mental picture of what he was gonna look like, but that was not it. That was not no. what I was expecting whatsoever. Yeah. Well, um, then we move on to the qualifiers, which I just should we address it now? It's now so that weird. We're I don't get it. Okay. I don't understand I've why never it's seen, like this. I've never seen something like this before. So the last three of every single semifinal were the ones that qualified. And, okay, I just want to address this because I tweeted about it. And I was like, this is a big problem. Like, this should not be happening. And everybody was like, why? They're the ones that deserve to win or to qualify. Yeah, that's the fucking point. You're supposed, like, the show directors, the people who set up those running orders, you're supposed to also kind of level the playing field a little bit. You're not supposed to have put all the best songs right at the end. And then put all the weak ones at the beginning because, first of all, you know the later later on in the show, it's like you get a little boost. I don't think it really matters, especially in a six semi semifinal. Yes, so few song songs. Semifinal. But like you know that that adds a little something extra, and so it's just like there there is no reason why, like it's so clearly planned that they're like, okay, we're just gonna put the three best songs so that people wait till the end, you know, stuff like that. Like I'm like. That's just not how it should be. Like a good show, you mix it up. There's supposed to be levels to it. Like this is not, that's not a good sign. It's not a good sign. And like, yes, we do see in Eurovision that songs that come in the second half tend to perform better because there is a bit of that. Like, I don't know if it's, I mean, it's like really recency, recency bias because they come later in the show. Mm -hmm. um, but it's six songs and 50% of them advance. So mm -hmm. I don't think that that's, really too much of a factor here and i yeah. know that they they knew which songs probably had the highest likelihood of going through so it's it is just it is very it's very weird yeah i don't know i mean and and that's just the thing it's not about the people voting for that like that's not the problem the problem is the show directors that should be mixing up the running order and giving you know everybody a little bit more of a fair chance or whatever like why can't mistra close the show you know yeah. why not <laughs> um but we had the song save me by Anne princess and i will say her vocal was amazing she was like such a stellar performer literally sounds exactly like the studio like perfection granted yes there's backing vocals and auto-tune but we got some bitches in this that didn't sound good so yeah she clearly can sing but okay why did she take a page out of margaret burger's uh closet wore something from uh. the margaret margaret burger collection we're gonna have two gray scale ugly ass um 
not flattering outfits in that final now. <laughs> and grayscale staging, like dancers, stage, like it, it felt the staging to me felt incomplete. Whatever that structure was behind them, like it was just like things didn't make sense to me in that way. It felt like almost emphasis on the dancing. Um and not, I don't know, like not on the song, I suppose. It was weird. Um, I didn't like this. I don't like the song. I don't like the eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch oh, a so tiger bad. by the toe. Shut Worst part of the song. Hurry up, because we won't win. Like, no, that's horrible. Like, the, I was actually, when I, this was not, I thought this was going to be the one to break the the three, three, one qualifying curse, because I really, really didn't expect this one to go through. <laughs> Yeah, um, the outfits honestly were so bad. Looked yeah. like Chairman Mao, like yeah. <laughs> gigantic boxy right. things, and they were that same color, boring ass gray. Also, it looked like a giant cafeteria table with one of yeah. the legs broken. I didn't understand what that was supposed to be. It just it this whole thing was a mess like they really did her dirty with the staging here yeah. and this is another example of the creative direction on this show being so bad everything yeah. just looked so bad the ideas this is where it really were not for me. there it it's it was just not it was so uninspired and just and everything was just visually so weak and yeah. this one was also like why is there they're not a single bit of color yes the that's the thing it's so dull and gray and sad and dreary and the song's not like that no like it doesn't make any sense to me yeah um then we had the song green lights by mia or maya and I was, okay, this was my favorite song going into the semi. This was one of my favorites of the whole national selection. To be honest, my AI has fallen off a little bit for me, and mm. this one has replaced it mm. in terms of song. Um, Because I just, this one is really, gro like, it builds for me. And, like, the more I listen to it, the more addictive it is. Once You know when you learn the lyrics to a song, and now you're like, I want to sing along. And then that makes you want to listen to it more because you want to sing along to it. And I love that it's like this powerful, big, huge uh, ballad with dance elements to it. And her as a performer, she was giving me Lord vibes because Lord does that a lot in her performances where it's like just her on stage. She's kind of very raw, which was even what she was giving with the styling, which I have issues with the styling. But and then she's like singing and then she like spins around and does a little interpretive dance. And it feels very like. They just put her on stage and like she's just performing and like there wasn't much direction because i remember there was this one time with lord where they told her basically she had to lip sync her song and she was like i'm not lip syncing my song and they were like you can't sing live it was on like the mtv music awards or something like a big or the vmas and she was like i refuse to uh lip sync and so she just threw her mic away and danced <laughs> And did interpretive dance the whole performance and didn't lip sync or anything. She just danced. And That's it was funny. like, everybody was trying to clown her because they were like, oh, it's embarrassing because it was clearly not really like rehearsed or anything. She yeah. just, but like, I always loved that performance. <laughs> I thought she killed it. Um, <laughs> so she gave me Lord vibes in this. Staging, where was it? Where was the staging? This was what clicked for me because I was like, this song to me could have won the whole fucking competition if it had some really strong staging that amplified this again like why is it black and white for like the entirety of the whole thing and it's called green lights and i know they bring green lights in and like yes i would love it to like grow from one thing to another but like it grew to like a minuscule amount of green lights what we needed to do was have them the whole time and it get even crazier you know, because I loved when they cut to her and she's like in this field of green lasers shooting everywhere. And I don't know, like she was such a good singer, too. Like she really was such a good performer. I just feel like it's not her fault. Like, I'm like, who do I blame? Because like <laughs> the staging and the styling. Why is she in those ugly leather pants? Ugly, like silver greenish gray leather pants. The top was so cool. It was like one shoulder scattered down 
across her body and then to the floor. But then she has these ugly leather pants. Imagine if that was a gown or a jumpsuit or something. Oh, it just left so much to be desired. I'm so glad it went through, of course. The outfit was very yeah. like Britney Spears, maybe 2006. Yes. Like I yes. know that Britney wore an outfit kind of like that with like the sort of like kind of part of the belly is showing one side is yes. kind of long and then like yeah. big low cut, maybe bell bottom jeans. I yeah. think but specific yeah. picture of her. I That's totally what that see what, reminded yeah, I know of. what you're saying. Yeah. What did you think of the song? Um... Uh, it didn't really do anything for me personally. Actually, you said Lord. I I really am not super familiar with her. Um, like I know who she is, but like she's not someone I followed very closely. Actually, she has a song called Green Light too. I just remember. Oh, does she really? That's, that's, one, of her big, that's one of that actually might have been the song she was performing at that award show. Um, well, what I had thought what about the title was didn't Anissa have a song called Green Lights in Give me American that green, song? That green light. Give me yeah, that green. I didn't like that song either. I love um, that song. I'm a Nisa fan. For some reason, what came into my mind with this performance was Leslie Roy's maps. Oh, because yeah. I was just like, girl, why are you doing all that? Like you're mm. just you're moving around so much and for really like mm. like no, like you don't have to you don't have to be doing all that. Yeah. Um because it did affect her vocals at a few points. I thought where it seemed like it's like, okay, don't, if you were not worrying about choreo right now, you would be sounding mm. so much better. And I hate that when people end up not sounding as good as you expect that they could sound because they're doing something with their body that maybe they just shouldn't be doing. Like mm. Roxanne had that issue because they made yeah. them do a lot of extra stuff on stage. Leslie Roy had that issue doing extra stuff that caused like less focus on the vocals. Um, yeah. And I think there there was a lyric somewhere about like going nowhere. And that's kind of like what this song does for me. It just absolutely no! goes nowhere. So where do we go? Cause right now we're going nowhere. Yeah, I, yeah, it that's the that's the song. They're, they're going nowhere that there's a whole bunch of fuss along the way. So maybe thematically it works, but as a song for me, it didn't work. Sorry. Disagree. I feel like this builds like crazy like it's like huge grand it it had so much opportunity for something wild like just monumental like if they had whoever the fuck like they must have fired somebody from a few years ago because i was re-watching like back in the day back in the day day because there was that thing going around with on twitter of like oh what's that name that one national selection performance i was going through all these national selection performances and like i'm thinking um with uh, talk talk to the hand, uh, lighting me up, you're lighting me up like fire. Back when they would have like fucking five hundred dancers on the stage, like literally. Uh, can you make love like a Scandinavian? Those were all in one year. That was like literally insane. If you go back and watch any of those performances from MGP, that felt like a like not even Eurovision. That felt like when you're watching like the Super Bowl. Like they'd literally be having like a hundred performers on the stage for one song. Wild. What happened there? Something what happened, happened. From there to here. Something where like happened. Nothing. Uh, yeah, it's really it is a shame that it's it's turned out like this, especially because they want to win so badly. I thought that um, it's kind of well, they want to win so badly. I guess that brings us to song number six. Yes, so the next and last song to perform was uh, Dum Diggy Da by Kano. I don't like this. I really, like, I'm not trying, I'm not, I really don't think I'm a, a Kano hater. Like, I really don't think I am, but, like, I feel like I come across like it because I'm just not loving this at all. And they are undeniably amazing live performers but i just don't like the song and i do not like the way they presented it for me it was so cheesy and cheap why do they got those bitches with the fucking little screens on their faces or whatever with lips i don't understand that direction i don't like that they okay they're separated from al alexandra for two minutes and 15 seconds and Tom doesn't sing. Tom is the the gay one, right? Tom yeah. doesn't sing 
a word until two minutes and 15 seconds. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like the way that it's basically her song and then they just pop in here and there. And I don't like the disconnect of them. There's not a fluidity that I felt like I remember from uh, Spirit in the Sky where they turned and the camera was hitting them in all the right directions and it was like all these things. It's like, it's missing all of that for me. It feels very clunky to me. I don't, I'm not, I really don't like this one. You know, there were some moments where they did these camera shots where it was like they were on Alexandra and then they would do a quick like uh, pan or cut and then they would just show like an empty space. And mm -hmm. that was really kick clicking into me like, oh, but that should be where they're showing one of the other performers yeah. because they're singing a part of the song. So I love Kano, um, unfortunately. And I do love this song too, but I don't think that this is even in like the top three of their best songs. So, and we've talked about this before where it's like a shame when people come back, but like, we know that they can do better but yeah. it's just not reaching the level that you wish that it would be. That being said, though, I considered doing a reaction video for this performance because uh, I thought, oh, you know, people probably would watch that. People would be interested in, in that reaction. But sometimes I just want to be able to, like, have my own moment with a a piece of art, especially one with a band that I really like, too, yeah. uh, to just really, like, really be in the moment. Um and I was so glad that I did that for this one because I was losing it. And like, I, I, I was swearing so much. I must have dropped the F bomb. Why? Like 20 times because it was so fucking funny. I was oh. like, this. <laughs> I was like, I don't fucking <sighs> believe this shit is fucking <laughs> Oh my God. I, I love it. I was so. I was so, I was so in it and so obsessed. Like mm. I wasn't, but I did, there were moments where I noticed like those weird cuts to nothing. Uh, the fact that it was all Alexandra, which is okay, but it's not totally typical. I don't think for the other songs, they normally do feel a little bit more balanced. Yeah. Um, but I was just, when the thing started spinning around, I don't know. I felt like I was on the scrambler or something. Yes. That, that and then like guys are like going. spinning on their heads and doing flips. And I'm Oh like... my God, like acrobat. It was just, it was so much happening. It was absolute loud and chaos. And I really did love it. I don't care. Um, I, I don't know. I think probably this will be my winner for the contest. Really? But... Well, but I feel like I have to go back and re-look at the songs that did make it through. But, like, nothing is, like, coming out to me as being, like, oh, yeah, that one was one that, I, like, I'm not really remembering anything in particular. Yeah, so um, I guess, so we've now listened to all of them. So I was going to ask you if you, like, who your winner was, who you're rooting for going into the final, because this is going to come out the day before they select their entrant, um, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, for me, I'm rooting for, I believe, I, I'm still rooting for my AI. That is who I want to win. I believe if she improves her live vocal, oh, yeah. I, I think that she will still be my winner. I love the, the, I love the styling. I love the overall like visual idea. And I, I'm most excited about that one um, going forward into the Eurovision season, like the prospect of that being Norway's entrant. Um, I'm also rooting for uh, Mia, Maya, Green Lights, cause, just because I love the song. I think it's a beautiful song, and I don't think they're going to be able to change anything, really. But in my brain, if they could change everything, then, you know, I'd be happy if it won. And then I'm also rooting for uh, Gotte. Um, not necessary. They're my, of the realistic winner options, they're the one I'm rooting for. Because... I feel like, honestly, it's going to come down to them or Kano, and I, I would prefer that. So I'm looking at the list, and I can say that the only two songs that I would put on a playlist to listen to by choice would be Kano and um, Super Robin, Erica Norwich. Those those would be the only two. So Dom Diggita mm. and My AI. Um, I think, honestly, probably that Ulvahem by Gote song yeah. probably is the best choice for them because it's like, okay, my AI 
it's the type of song. It's not even just the type of the song. Let's be real. It's one of the same artists as yeah. Subwoofer. Mm -hmm. So we've seen that before from yeah. them in Eurovision. And then we've obviously seen Kano for them in Eurovision. And it's been a while since we've seen something of the style of yeah. Ulvaham song. And I think that would be a, a really smart choice and would yeah. look really good in their like sequence of songs that they have been mm -hmm. sending because it mm -hmm. would show that they're being versatile and they're not just you know falling back on old tricks and like that works when you're looking at the national selection because it's things that you want to you want to get your people to tune in to watch for the national selection but i think strategically um they shouldn't go with like the those those two yeah yeah. Even though those are the only two that I actually like. Yes. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I feel like that is like a a good plan for Norway to send something that is different from the other stuff that they've sent in the past and it will stand out in that way. And it'll be different from anything else that's going to be there because also, well, we already know that there's going to be a song similar in the similar ish vein to my AI coming from another country. Um, that hasn't been released yet, but we know because it's been leaked. So wait, what? Yeah, um, Austria. Oh, I have avoided that leak. So yes. So um, so I just feel like you know, given all the circumstances, I think mm -hmm. that that would be the strongest choice yeah. for that. But speaking of strong, we move on to something that lacks all of that, which is Lithuania. <laughs> Um, oh my god, I forgot we were covering Lithuania. Oh I know, god. every week, every week. It's like, oh yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, so true, though. I mean. I know. Fun fact, yeah. my family actually came from what is now Lithuania. Really? Mm -hmm. They were Polish. Um, Like, they were ethnically Polish. And when they left, it was the last years of the Russian Empire. So there was oh. no Poland or Lithuania at the time. But they mm. came from around uh, Vil 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 Vilnius. Oh, cool. Well, so I'm kind of Lithuanian. Yes, but no, I'm her, really, I'm really not. Her <laughs> Lithuanian family that lived there. Let's call you Monica. Uh, <laughs> but so uh, we're gonna go through these songs from the lowest ranking. So we had Sid Hollow with their song "Here We Go Again." Um, I said, um, this is cute, I guess. But then as I was watching, I said, actually, no, it isn't. <laughs> um, I said, girl, why are we in church? Because this was like proper. Okay, so last last week, I stay, I said she needed more gospel, like in the styling, like elements. This one, I, it was too on the nose of like church choir, like fully y'all wearing the damn church choir gowns and everything. Um. And that triggers me. I don't want church. I don't want to be yeah. in church. Yeah, this song I thought was well-performed, but I totally hated it. That being said, I was actually really surprised that it was last. I didn't think really? it would come last. I didn't think it would qualify. I didn't think it would be last, but. Mm. Okay. Um, For me, uh, I was not surprised. I felt like this was actually probably one of the worst. Um, <laughs> Then we had Krauka by Sun san francisco i didn't realize what that name san, san francisco, francisco. That's, funny. that's funny yeah um i didn't understand the styling i didn't understand why they were all dressed the same like the dancers and her were all wearing jeans <laughs> jeans and a leather jacket very casual it was not giving to me also thinking imagining like a poor dancer having to dance in a fucking yeah. in fucking long jean long baggy jeans and leather jackets um the song was fine it was just um like a boring nowhere pop song which to be honest was literally pretty much every song in this selection which it just it became difficult for me to uh even really like say anything because like when something's just so boring it makes me feel nothing yeah this one made me feel nothing for sure it just had kind of like a vaguely like 80s instrumentation uh it didn't feel like they were being inspired by the 80s and bringing us anything like fresh or interesting it just it was what it was and um i absolutely hated that like static led background it was actually hard to look at 
and mm. I just stopped watching because I couldn't look at that static back. Like it was giving me a headache. Yeah. Then we had Pascubek by Angela. And I actually thought this was really good for what it was. Poor girl had literally no staging. Like she literally had nothing on that stage. It was just, it was just a rocker girl and actually a really cool outfit, really cool haircut. She yeah, looked she was, she really looked great. fucking cool. The song actually sounded like something I would imagine in San Remo. Like, mm. I don't know why, just that kind of girl rock kind of vibe. Something about it was giving me Sam Remo vibes. I don't know. Maybe it was the language. Something about it sounded like Italian to me. Um, That's interesting. Okay. I don't know why, but um, I really liked it. I thought it should have been higher than where it was because it was one of the better ones. Like, I actually added this to a playlist because I thought it was pretty good. Uh, yeah, I thought, you know, it was okay. It felt a little bit dated to me, though. Obviously, she was going for more of a, like, a retro thing, like, with her look and everything. Um it's funny that you said San Remo because it reminds me of a different kind of festival, which is Juvenalia, which is a thing that happens in Poland. And it's like a week before exams where like all of the students at your university like get totally hammered all day for a week and like have barbecues and they'll have these like concerts, these big free concerts. And they always have these artists that are like, like maybe current artists, but also a lot of like sort of like older artists who like do the mm. Juvenalia circuit mm. where like they, you know, they go from place to place. They kind of hit up all the universities. Uh -huh. um, this felt like the type of uh, song that you would hear getting played at one of these Juvenalias where they oh. just kind of have like uh, just really broad, like Eastern European mm -hmm. rock appeal. Um, and like, I thought it was okay, um, but it did kind of just, it just maybe gave me sort of like flashbacks of like, oh, yeah. you know, drinking beer with raspberry syrup pumps inside of it, <laughs> like, um, and smoking like counterfeit cigarettes that you bought from someone in your dorm. Oh, like that, God. like it was, it was definitely just, it was giving me, it was giving me flashbacks to, oh my God, 15 years ago. It's crazy. Um, but like, it was giving me flashbacks to my life 15 years ago, listening to music that was popular 15 years before that. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely wasn't current at all. No. Um, but then we had the song In the Night by Baltos Vernos. And I actually like, I thought this was literally so beautiful to me. I, it gave me Aurora vibes. It was this kind of elfy fairy um which is just it's what uh baltos vernos does with their same entry last year last year they went or not last year a few years ago they went for something more you know swaying in the wind like you know ethereal in that way but this one i felt like i don't know i kind of liked it a little bit more it was a little more powerful there was more movement there was dancing i loved the visuals i felt like they really created like a story with like the sunset and then it got dark and like there were there were so many levels to it in that way i thought this was really really cool really different for them too like a a, a different direction but still in their their world like of this like running through the forest kind of vibe like they're very aurora aurora coded aurora the singer um but so i was i honestly this was this is one of my, one of my favorites i've heard in the selection and i'm really sad it didn't go through and i'm actually shocked it even came fifth fifth out of eight pissing me off i actually really like this song um i liked the song but i didn't think anything else worked like the choreo mm. was really messy i didn't think the vocals were totally strong throughout um, mm. I think though that it could have been improved and I'm a little bit bummed out yeah. that it wasn't going to get that chance to have a little bit better staging and a little bit more practice behind it to really be strong because I think the potential was there and this performance, uh, just didn't meet the potential, which is too bad. Yeah. It's actually really sad that for Lithuania this year, they don't, they're not doing like the second chances and stuff because Lithuania was the one selection where um, second chances 
kind of made sense to me because they actually oftentimes changed a lot of aspects of their performance. They like almost always changed their styling. They would change some choreo. Sometimes bitch, some some of these bitches were changing the whole song, you know? <laughs> so like, unlike Melfest, it's kind of like, okay, well, we're going to see the same damn performance again. Like what's, what's the point? Um, with with Lithuania, like they had that opportunity to make changes and stuff. So like, I'm kind of sad that we don't get that because, yeah, you miss out on something that maybe just needed a little refinement and could have actually been something amazing. Yeah. Um, then we had the song done by Mary Mo. Um, I thought her outfit was really fucking cool. This kind of like bondage black uh, corset that had like these long pieces that went down and then it had like a floor length gown that was almost like a white um, like dress shirt and then the tie. Like it was so different and weird and cool. I thought it was so high fashion, really cool. Um, she looked like Carrie Underwood. And it was kind of tripping me out watching the whole time because I was like, this ain't Car Carrie Underwood. Mm -hmm. Like, ain't no way she would ever sing a song like this. Um, I thought the song was boring. Yeah. But like all these songs are like these mid-tempo pop songs that I'm just like, okay. It makes me feel nothing. But her fashion made me feel something at least. Yeah, I didn't think the song was very interesting. She performed it really well. Um and she did look great. I totally agree with you there. And actually what the outfit reminded me of was a little bit of what Alexandra wore when uh, Kano did Monument in the mm -hmm. national final. It was mm -hmm. kind of, I think it was kind of like white and black and maybe had yeah. that sort of like corset wraparound thing. Um, uh, but yeah, this one just, um, this one wasn't doing anything for me. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the next song that we had was Zoo by Mayday, 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 maybe Mayday. That would be kind of a cool name. Yeah. Um, okay, so I thought right immediately, like what caught my attention was kind of the beat and the instrumental. I felt like that was like really cool. It was this, it was like kind of trippy and I loved her hair, but I did not know what, the hell they were doing with these damn dancers and their mismatched Wednesday Adams looking ass. Uh, what the fuck? I well, Lithuania do be having some questionable styling at times. Um, but I did like the song. It was kind of like dark and and a little bit witchy at the same time, still like danceable, which I thought was cool. I thought it was a cool vibe. It just yeah, I thought it was actually really cool. Yeah, I actually really love this song. Um, but I, I love the song. It sounded like something I would listen to, but it didn't seem like a strong contender to no. win this contest at all compared to what else they've had. Um, but I did like it a lot. I'm actually yeah. surprised that it came as high as uh, the eight point mark because I could easily see them tanking something like this. Yeah, but that's the thing. I feel like Lithuania is just really unpredictable because yeah. like some of these songs... I it just doesn't the placement almost feels random. Like, I don't know. But then we had the song Be Careful by Hue de Cometas. Um, bitch, she looked fucking stunning. Yes. That gold dress and her fucking body, like it was skin tight, gorgeous. She looked a fucking mile tall, too. Like she looked amazing. Um, I, I like the song. It was cool, kind of jazzy, you know, just very different from everything else that we had going on. And they managed to still make it feel very, um, modern and, and have still be like refreshing, like not like a dated sort of, like it feels referential to maybe some mm -hmm. things, but not, but modern. Um, and I felt like you would like the song. Oh, you're right. I loved it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I loved it. Um, I'm happy it went through. I totally agree with this as a qualifier. Mm -hmm. I think that was the right move. I love the vibe and the lighting and the staging. And I actually think the dress was silver. Was it? Oh, the lighting. I think, it, I think they used lighting to make it look different. Wow. They were doing a lot there. And so that yeah. made me think too, like if they're doing all that interesting shit in the semifinal, 
then they're going to do something really, really cool in the final. Mm -hmm. So I was totally into this one. I thought, I thought it was great. Um, this might be my winner for Lithuania based on what we've heard so far. It's probably one of my favorites. Hmm. Yeah, I definitely saw that. Like literally while I was watching, I was like, I'm really not going to like this. I, I would like totally this. wear that dress too in a heartbeat. Yeah, I mean, I would too. That was that was stunning. Um, then last up, we had the winner of the semi, which was the song Impossible by Shower. Um, I was shocked that this won the semi. Girl, yeah. what the fuck were we doing with the damn naked mannequins on the stage? Mind you, you they had like four on the stage. Girl, pales in comparison to um to Romania from a few goodbye. The humans, girl, at least they filled that stage up. Um this See, was... I thought of vampires are alive with the mannequins, but in vampires yeah. are alive, they've got like outfits got and costumes. wigs on them. Yeah. 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 Um that just that threw me off. I was like, that's such a weird decision. I don't know why they would go with that. And I didn't think this was bad. Like, I totally like I kind of was watching it and I was like, oh, I understand, I suppose, why this went through, but because it's not bad. The rap stuff is cool. Like it's very different, but I found it very lame. Um, and I just feel like I was extra triggered and actually extra didn't like the song because I went to the comments and everybody was praising it like crazy. Like mm. actually it was like, this is winning. Everybody seems wow. obsessed with this song. What? And I'm like, really? That seems impossible to me. Because yeah. what the fuck was this? Well, okay. I thought actually, well, I thought that the song was interesting. Like it, the song, like the music of the song I thought was interesting. I did not like him though. Yeah. Like I would prefer to see this maybe as with a female vocalist, which is always kind of my preference, but something, there was at least one thing that wasn't clicking for me and it was him as a performer. Yeah. And his and his vocal style for the song, I think, with a different singer, I might feel that it would deserve to qualify. But definitely, as it is now, I do not understand why this one was chosen. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. Um. So that was Lithuania, and that is that was our little Super Saturday roundup <laughs> that we had going on. You know, lots of songs, lots of um. Lots of stuff. And it's kind of wild because basically, um, oh, I was going to say this is the last episode that we're going to have before our trip, but we're going to film one presumably beforehand. We'll probably do one more before we go on the trip. And then after that, we will be broadcasting from Finland. Yes, yes. But this is the this is the um, first one that will or the last one that we'll have posted before we're in Finland because that one will um, come out on Friday so yeah. so um so you know the next time you see us we will in theory be in Finland but um whatever <laughs> anyways I'm, I'm over time and space over I'm over complicating it <laughs> um oh whoa 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 uh yeah so that that's that's it for episode 23 of the joint state podcast and we need to know what song you are loving right now Renata uh, so, uh, this week I found myself, I, I think I did Susta Tula Tati last week, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I'm still listening to that song, like practically on a loop, but a, a different song came into my rotation, which mm. is not actually a super new song, but it's called, uh, Vila Eline by Ramsey's mm. Two. It's a Finnish song and it kind of like went viral, had like a viral video in 2023. And uh, whenever I first heard it, I wasn't like super crazy into it, but I think it, it came on shuffle the other day, like at the right moment for me and kind of clicked. And I have been sort of listening to that one uh, mm -hmm. on a loop the past week. Yeah. Well, I have a Finnish song for you that oh. I'm obsessed with. Yes. Actually, I don't think it's in Finnish, but um, it's a Finnish song because it's by Erica Wittman and oh. it is called Elizabeth Taylor. And it is just a total bop. It totally. OK, I think. I know there's rumblings, but I know there's no confirms confirming anything, but um, 
I think she's going to perform this as an interval act, this song, because it it just sounds like something I would see on a Eurovision stage. Like, mm. it just sounds so Eurovision-y. And I just, like, when I'm listening to it, I fully envision this song. Like, she just released it. I feel like... Well, I think what we'll definitely be seeing is the song that she recorded with Katia last year. Because they were in the mm. studio together. And... um they never but they haven't released it oh okay it it looked like they were posting some stuff on instagram that it looked like they were maybe doing the same photo Mm -hmm. shoot video shoot and i think i have a feeling that the interval act will be katia and erica vickman and they will at least perform that song they did together but i wouldn't be surprised if it was like a thing where katia performs erica performs and they perform together because they did say that there would be a lot of performances yes I hope so. I hope I I pray to God, God being Erica Vickman, yes. that we see her, um, that we get to see and experience her live because that's literally like a fucking dream. That would be so um, amazing. Yes. Well, and... people who made it to the end. Oh, should I go ahead and do that? No. Yes. Yes. So people who made it to the end of the episode, uh, Let us know what you've been listening to as well. And uh, also just drop us an emoji if you don't have a particular song. And do a little pizza slice because after all Mm. this talking, I got to fill up my stomach and I got some pizza waiting for me. And I love pizza. Can I get a slice? Oh, you know I would be sharing this pizza with you. I got so much food. I got a pizza and I got a bunch of breadsticks and I got chicken wings and um. I'm yeah, a, I'll help you yeah. finish that off. You, and I've got some chocolate cheesecake. Oh, damn, damn. Mm, well, yep. Um, and it's like well, midnight. Whoop. Well, whatever. I know, right? Well, you know, Renata's gonna go and enjoy her pizza, and I'm going to, you know, maybe eat some wheat thins. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> and yeah, guys. So my thank you guys so much for watching slash listening uh to episode 23 of the Joint Slate podcast. Of course, make sure to follow, subscribe on wherever you listen to this podcast, as well as don't forget to follow me at Maxi Rainbow. And I am at Eastbot Pod. And yeah, guys, we will see you all next week. Good. Uh,